What's up friends of the good mood, this is Money and welcome to a gaming chair review today here, you can see it in the back, together with some War of Wads gameplay afterwards, okay? A company named Ewin Racing reached out to me offering me a free gaming chair, which I really needed by the way, because my old chair was squeaking like crazy. The only thing they wanted me to do in return was to make a fair review about this chair, which sounds fair to me as well, so that's exactly what I'm gonna do with you guys here. We're gonna unbox the whole chair, we're putting it together, seeing how easy that is, and also then we're gonna have a look at how good the chair is because let's face it guys every day I'm spending a lot of time in sitting position on my PC you know recording and editing video footage live streams with you guys in the comment section answering comments and all this kind of stuff so I really have to make sure to use a chair that is comfortable for my back and doesn't put me in you know terrible back pain uh, in a couple of years right so hopefully this chair does just that and on top of that I was given a 10% discount code or voucher for all you guys out there in case you want to get yourself a chair of your own from the same company okay and uh, so yeah let's go and have a look at this bad boy and uh, and then we're gonna do some gameplay later so now you see me twice on the screen isn't that funny so we're here unboxing the whole thing the first thing that came out of the box is a really big box by the way is the five star aluminum base of this chair it's a real sturdy one so uh, overall pretty good we're gonna put it together later the wheels just they clip in just like that nothing else required I have the whole video sped up by four times except when I'm showing you something like this this is the back of the chair it's really also very sturdy and and massive also weighs quite a lot and it has these cushions on it that you can move back and up uh, back and forth or, or something they are strapped to the back of the chair and they will remain in position which is pretty good and um, however the uh, and that's the accessory box right here um, and by the way the back cushion that is up here I removed it because I felt like you know my uh, my gamer neck I, I don't make need to make that even worse by having something that sticks my head out the whole time right and then you have here the uh, the base of the city base of the chair as well super heavy stuff all of it and uh, once you've got all this stuff out of the box you can put it back you know make room to montage and put the chair back together so at first let's take a look at the accessory box there is inside um, the manual to uh, you know build the chair uh, which isn't quite you know easily to understand because they crisscross around the whole thing we have some gloves to you know put the chair together I mean really gloves come on <laughs> then we have the wheels and the cover for the hydraulic system and of course the hydraulic system itself it's it's right in there I think it's made to 150 kilogram so uh, pretty sturdy and pretty strong and uh, then the tools to you know put the chair together come with the whole stuff and then this uh, mechanism right there that is made to you know get the chair up and down with the hydraulic system I don't know how you, how it's called so let's start off here with the wheels um, which by the way these wheels are nicely rubberized which is cool because they if you move the chair around I can do it right here if you move the chair around there's no there's no sound it's like it's super quiet because the wheels are really really nicely rubberized and uh, unlike my previous chair that was having this scratching noise when I was pushing it around and uh, which also when they have no rubber the wheels it basically makes it so that you know it scratches over the ground instead of just rolling all the time uh, you basically just clip the wheels into the base and then they're, and then they're in position no problem um, at the back of the chair right here you see there's you know pre-mounted screws uh, hex screws with the hex tool you can just unmount them real quick uh, and once you've done that it's all just easy you put you basically oh yeah well, very important one of the sides one of these mechanisms is moving and the other one is sturdy and doesn't move you see it here this one is absolutely tight it doesn't move only this one moves don't worry it's made to be that way this is normal okay uh, I was confused at first but I, I realized it has to be this way so basically you just slide the back part into the base of the chair then you screw these four um, uh, screws together and this right here would be the you know the the lever that makes you able to just move the the back back and forth so now we're montaging this uh, there's also once again four pre uh, mounted screws you are gonna have to unmount them uh, which we're gonna do here real quick Brrrp. I think this is even like 20 times speed or something that I made right here and this thing says front this way okay and that's pretty good because this way you can you know how to montage this thing and you don't do it the wrong way uh, just basically put it there screw those four screws back in done so that's uh, almost the whole chair now. The only thing left to do is uh, putting the hydraulic system into the base of the chair and then basically just putting the chair on top of it. 
Ta-da! <laughs> he was hidden behind uh, the, the, what is it called? The green screen. Wonderful. So we just put the hydraulic system, you just, you just put it in there, easy, easy, easy peasy lemon squeezy, and then you put the chair in. That's it. Now we're done. The whole chair is basically almost done. The only thing left to do is, uh, <laughs> ta-da, is the, the cover uh, of, uh, on the sides for, you know, hiding the screws and everything. Um, so that's what we're gonna do here. Blah, putting, putting this in. And I think overall it took me like half an hour to montage the whole chair. Um, it's like done in five minutes. It looks like I did it like that. But I did have to, you know, understand a few things before I could uh, complete it. So, um, but the manual was helpful and uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's put it like that. It, it, it's, it's a really easy thing. Ta-da! Once again, the chair is complete. So, sitting in the chair, you see the old chair next to it, we're gonna have a bit better comparison in a few seconds. Here, there's two buttons that lets you slide, you know, the, the arm pit thingies there, or arm thingies, you know, forth and back. Then you can also make them up and down. And what I forgot to show you, you can put them in and out. So, fore and back, in and out, and up and down. You can move them, and then you can even turn them, like this. So, you have like a four or five times system, which allows you to uh, adjust these these things here for your arms exactly the way you need it. I love to make them usually just slide them underneath my desk like perfectly and then just lay my arms on them and hold the mouse. That's the best aiming I can ever do when I have a chair that supports this, right? And that one does it perfectly, especially because you have so many ways to uh, to adjust this. How is it even called? I don't know the vocabulary of this thing. Uh, to adjust this to your needs. And now you see both chairs next to each other. And one thing I can tell you already that I don't like about the new chair is that I'm sweating on my back with this one. This right here, you can see, you can see through the chair. You see the green screen behind it and the wall and my hands, or no, nah, you didn't see the hand, but you see you can see through because there was like a, a net uh, of, of, uh, of cloth and, and there was, you know, air coming through. So I wouldn't sw ever sweat on this chair, which was great. This one here is basically a really high quality uh, matter, uh, uh, material and foam uh, behind it, but it doesn't let air through. So basically I'm uh, at the live stream yesterday Yesterday, three hours live stream. I was sweating a lot. Uh, it was very warm in my room here with all the you know PCs running and every equipment. Um, so it reached 30 degrees, and uh, and I don't have a you know air conditioner here. So I was starting to sweat a lot on my back, and I didn't do that on the old one. So that is one uh, one thing I need to say was better on the old one. But you can lay on the chair. You can actually put it down so far you can lay back there and just really be in a comfortable position if you want. But although if I really want to lay down, I'm just gonna go into my bed, right? But uh, yeah, I guess if you <laughs> if you have your bed in uh, I don't know somewhere else, you have a certain studio far away from your bed and from your home, then having this position is probably something really really cool to have. And once again, here we're doing back and forth. And also, if you release it, it doesn't you know snap back up. It goes slowly up, which is a really cool thing and um, makes no unnecessary no noise or you know thing. But one thing you need to know: you need to push the lever all the way through. Only then it will release because it's like a like a cockwheel and it locks in. And if you don't you know release the whole um, the lever all the way up, then it will end up um, you know not not giving free or it makes like a, a noise. Um, okay, so there we go. We're sitting in the chair now. Uh, I'm finding the right position. There it is, the chair when it's mounted completely. You see it here, um, standing in the in the room. I recorded this with my, with my tablet. I'm sorry, I don't have a professional camcorder right here, which uh, is something that is still on my to-do list. Um, let's see, maybe with uh, <laughs> with some Patreon help, we can get some um, and maybe use that instead of the webcam or something. I don't know. Uh, but here, that was my tablet recording. And so you can uh, push up the the cushions there, and they remain in the position you put them to. Which is a cool thing. You get it. You can find the right spot for this thing to sit, so it's um, so it's as as comfortable as it gets. Okay, so I can't tell how how it feels in two years. I can only say how it feels right now. Sitting on this chair here with the cushion, uh, it feels pretty good. It, it actually supports the the back really well, especially where you need it because you can move it up and down how you want it, right? And um, and just going back and forth. It's a, it's a really good chair. It's the best chair I've ever owned. And um, this would be here the company, Ewin Racing. Uh, there's an EU, you can see it up in the left corner. There's an EU version and an American version. Um, uh, I guess depending on where you live, you, you need to choose the right one. They also have sl uh, slightly changed things or slightly changed names, I'm not sure. But I think most of the chairs are really similar. And uh, basically what is there? There's different versions of chairs. Uh, here the big and tall one, the Flash series, which is the one I have. This right here is the one we're using here, the Flash series. And then we have the red, black gaming, there's the Hero series, and then there is the, um, 
the Champion series, uh, which is a little bit cheaper, but I think those are the newest ones. And there's the Calling series, which is like the lower budget version. And um, yeah, no, don't forget, guys, using their voucher, the, the code is in the video description for you guys. Uh, or in the pinned comment, uh, it's called Good Mood, okay? If you use this code when checking out one of these uh, chairs, if you want one, uh, then you're going to save 10% off the price. Just put it into the voucher uh, tab and then, uh, you know, click on OK and it will, you know, put out, out the 10%. And basically, yeah, that's it. That's the chair. I really like having it and I want to say thank you even racing for giving it to me for free That's awesome. And uh, hopefully you guys out there also had some fun watching this video right here and uh, Maybe you are in need of a, of a chair. I don't know right uh, and full disclosure though I will get commission if you get a chair using my code I want to put it in because I want to be honest with you guys and um, other than that It's time to go and start some war robots gameplay with the new chair, right? So, as promised guys, here a bit of gameplay for War Robots with a new chair for the first time. And uh, this video is special and it has a special topic. It's the King of the Hill game mode and I want to show you how it is like to play King of the Hill with me in your team. Because I play it very unique and special, I just don't care at all about the beacon rewards and points. All I want to do is just run around killing reds, okay, dealing damage. So what I end up doing is uh, killing the enemies a lot from the beacons. And instead of sitting on the beacons to get the points, then I let you guys sit on it instead. And I'm just running around to the next red guys I can find and take him out. So you see this orc inspector right there running around. Uh, wait, it's a it's a shock train inspector, sorry. He thought he's in safety now, jumping back down, waiting for his next stealth to pop up. And then he can deal the next huge amount of damage. But no sir, I already got him right there before. Uh, well, right when he was in cover, I got him. And this Inquisitor right there, he's now gonna see my rockets flying towards him. And I think I got him pretty good in the air. Some of my rockets hit the ground, but some of them I think hit him pretty good as well. So um, that was like a half hit right there in the middle of the air. Um, and there was this Kamiho who just dashed, so giving me an easy time to hit him. And then, ah, I'm stuck! I hate to be stuck like this. An Orc Inspector jumps up. The Orc uh, Inquisitor is coming. Everybody wants me, and ah. Uh, I'm like so annoyed that I wasn't able to get this uh, to get out of this point there so quick. But now I, I thought I was gonna die here, but look what happened. I got ridiculous amounts of support from this team right here. It's like they're repaying me for the work I do to get them the beacons. <laughs> That's so cool. Boom! Kamiho dead. Now, um, we got this beacon here next to us. You see our friend sitting on it, you know, getting the beacon points. Well, I'm just gonna try and defeat the guys, the enemy, on the next beacon already. Unfortunately though, these, this beacon is way too close to the enemy spawn and I will not be able to get rid of so many bad guys all the time. But, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll just try. Who knows, maybe some of them run out of bots before the end, uh, the end of the round and that will also have been a great help. Now, what is the next target? Okay, this guy right there. I'm not even sure what it is. Trying to hit it? Boom! That was a big hit into that Inquisitor right there. And before I take my damage, I'm going right back down. Bye-bye, guys! They thought they were gonna kill me, but I got right, you know, in cover uh, when they were trying to hit me. Still trying to do something here. I'm glad I still have four Vortex going. When you lose that much HP that I have right here, normally you, lose, you start losing some weapons also. But in this case, it was pretty good and I haven't lost weapons. But somebody decided to end my uh, my killing spree with a Vortex uh, Spectre with some Spirals and Hydras. And uh, that's what they are good for. So let's jump into the Raven instead and try to do what I'm doing best in King of the Hill, which is just making room for you to sit on the beacon, okay? All right, so waiting for the right moment. I'm just observing the area right now, seeing what happens. Right now, the beacon that is active is under our control, so I don't need to actually do something, but I already see the next beacon the reds are going towards. You see it there? It's four enemy red players coming towards the next beacon coming up, and I'm waiting for my right opportunity and chance to jump right in there. So here we go. We have an Inquisitor right in front of us with Thunder and Orcans. And before he can deal too much damage, we got him out of the way. This guy is jumping up. I'm trying to help as best as I can to bring him down. And while my two guys are also dealing damage to this Bulgazari on the beacon. And now they got it. So uh, now they can get the, almost the entire beacon points out of this. I'm making sure they're sitting on it, having fun getting points. And meanwhile, I'm just waiting here for my chance to get to the next enemy beacon. Or, you know, trying to you know defeat them. Something I could do very well is getting rid of beak shields. That's something I do later. For now, let's just double jump away right here. 
you see there is a griffin with vortex or aphid i think yep some aphids are coming in dealing quite a good amount of damage uh, I know I want this guy, but I also know with his aphid, he's got an advantage over me. So what I do, I just stand with my back against the wall, because this way I get closer to the wall, not taking any aphid damage from above. And I stand here as long as it takes for me to heal the aphid fire. And uh, when it finally fired, I know I can turn around, jump off, kill this guy, kill this guy, and at the same time make sure these guys right here are gonna have a great time getting points in the upcoming beacon that will be right there because there is no more enemies getting even remotely close to them in time so they can just knock themselves out getting all the beacon progress to them and um and yo until uh until this beacon is you know sucked dry basically Meanwhile, I'm still at 56,000 HP that will still allow me to do a lot of damage to this Inquisitor once his stealth drops and uh, that is going to be right now. Jumping over him and, uh, and I think that with the next beacon that is currently being taken right next to us here, uh, wait, where is it? Is it this one? No, there it is. You see it right there. Uh, the beacon here to the right side. Uh, also, my team is already standing on it and they're clearing uh, the beacon points and winning the game for us. Also, what I can do here is draining the shield for our uh, Tolumba Spectre right there to get it. And look at them both jump stealthing at, at towards the enemy right here. Uh, the right round was now already over and uh, I think like I, I was able to be a really good team player in this one here guys I want to show you the results see I'm lowest bottom uh, player right here with um, with lots of damage done and uh, pretty much pretty much zero beacon progress I only got five and zero capture uh, but I really think still I was able to allow my team to get some of those beacons really effectively and and that is also one way of playing it that's more the way I play it because you know like I said I don't enjoy sitting on a beacon watching a uh, you know bar fill up or go down that's not my play style but hey that was the video hopefully you also had some fun watching it and uh and i'm just gonna say thank you guys so much for watching if you enjoyed this video leave a like and comment down below and if you haven't already hit subscribe as brutal as a man can it for more thanks for bearing with me you guys are awesome as always money gaming signing off bye bye